In 2016, Kanye West was handcuffed and forcibly sent to the UCLA Medical Center to undergo involuntary psychiatric commitment. Indeed, since that bizarre event and the months-long recovery that followed it, Kanye has been surrounded by an aura of confusion that appears to be affecting every aspect of his life, including his music. And Donda is a perfect example of that confusion. While this album mainly consists of Christian songs, the flurry of symbolism surrounding it points directly to the occult elite. The release of Donda was preceded by three listening parties, which were actually massive events taking place in stadiums. They were all rife with ritualistic symbolism that revealed the dark truth behind Kanye's Christian hymns. In order to understand that symbolism, we must first understand the general context behind it. The album Donda was named after Kanye's mother who died in strange circumstances in 2007. Donda West, who was 58 years old, unexpectedly lost her life one day after undergoing liposuction, a tummy tuck, and a breast reduction. She died at home the next day following complications from the surgery. The day after her surgeries, West's mother allegedly experienced a sore throat, pain, and tightening in her chest, before collapsing in the early evening. A friend at the house called 911, and West was taken to the hospital, where she was pronounced dead in the emergency room. Donda died on November 10, 2007. After all these years, an aura of mystery still surrounds Donda's death. The actual cause of her death was never conclusively determined in, and the various parties involved in the death, notably the plastic surgeon Jan Adams, have all been accused of killing her. These bizarre circumstances contributed to the ever-intensifying rumors that Kanye sacrificed his mother for continued fame in the industry. Donda was not only Kanye's mother, but she was his manager who was actively involved in all aspects of his career. After her death, some noticed that Kanye's work became infused with occult imagery. While experiencing the death of a parent is a sad yet natural part of life, there was nothing natural about Donda's death and it appears to be eating away a Kanye every day. In a 2015 interview with Q Magazine, Kanye was asked what he sacrificed for success. His answer? My mom. He added. If I had never moved to LA, she'd be alive. I don't want to go far into it because it will bring me to tears. This feeling of guilt appears to have deeply affected Kanye's mental health. And, since then, he only sunk deeper into the dark world of the occult elite. To make things worse, he became one of the many men who came out broken after his association with the Kardashian clan. After his involuntary psychiatric commitment, people close to him stated that Kanye suffered memory loss for months, which means that he underwent extreme treatment such as electroshock therapy. Kanye himself said that he was in the sunken place, a reference to the movie Get Out, where the main character gets hypnotized and dissociates with reality. In short, everything points to him being under mind control using MK Ultra techniques. Last year, Kanye made it clear that he wanted to break away from the Kardashians. He even accused the family of trying to send him back in 5150 involuntary psychiatric commitment. Did he break away from the Kardashians and the occult elite in general? The symbolism of Donda strongly points to no. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Everything about Donda, could be interpreted in two opposite ways. At first glance, the album appears to be a tribute to Kanye's mother. However, the album intro, which is just someone repeating the name Donda countless times, is immediately off-putting. Indeed, it sounds as if someone was trying to torment a guilt-ridden Kanye about the death of his mother. 
Most songs on this album could be characterized as Christian rap. However, nearly all of the symbolism surrounding it points directly to the satanic ways of the occult elite that control Canny. The cover of Donda is inspired by a Louise Bourgeois painting, About Motherhood. Louise Bourgeois is one of the favorite artists of the occult elite, and her often disturbing works can be found in powerful places. Tony Podesta has a sculpture of Louise Bourgeois inside his house. Named Arch of Hysteria, the sculpture depicts the most extreme physical reaction when one undergoes intense trauma, or, according to some, demonic possession. Who wouldn't want that in their living room? For years, bourgeois giant spiders were exposed all around the world, in front of the elite's favorite buildings. The name of the sculpture? Maimon, or Mother. Shortly before the release of Donda, Kani hosted three listening events, and the symbolism surrounding these events was highly ritualistic. The first even was minimalistic. It was all about Kani being covered in red. In the ritualistic context of these events, the color red symbolizes the sacrifice that precedes a cult transformation. The second event was all about the color black. As seen in countless videos in the past, the color black always follows the color red in ritualistic entertainment. It represents the final phase of the occult ritual, the final transformation. During this event, the black-clad canny was portrayed as a prisoner. The stage consisted of a mattress on the floor and a couple of dumbbells. Incidentally, Candy actually lived in a cell-like room inside the stadium during the week of the event. In short, the entire thing appeared to refer to when Candy was in forced psychiatric commitment. While the first two events were rather minimalistic in their approach, the third and last one, which took place in Candy's native Chicago, had a lot more going on. It was nothing less than a massive ritual. The stage of the final event was basically a living painting. It was centered around a rendition of Kanye West's childhood home which was toppled by a crucifix, turning it into some kind of chapel. That chapel was surrounded by a barricade around which people dressed in black ran around incessantly. This entire scene was surrounded by black SUVs driving around, similar to those used by the American government. In short, everything about this scene points to an oppressive police state. At the center of it all this commotion, is a humble chapel. Is Kanye trying to say that Christianity is under siege by oppressive forces? Well, it is not that simple. As stated earlier, everything about this event can be interpreted in two opposite ways. Is this house truly a chapel? Or is it the site of an occult ritual that is disguised as a chapel, and that is actually protected by the powers that be? One answer can be found in the people hanging around that house. Standing on the porch, Marilyn Manson, Shensia, Dababy, and Canny. In this living painting, these celebrities were not there to perform. They were selected to stand in front of that house because what they represent. Let's start with Marilyn Manson. What does he represent? This photo shows Manson with the founder of the Church of Satan, Anton Levy. Manson was highly involved with this organization. An entire book could be written about the occult and satanic imagery in Marilyn Mason's work. It is at the very core of his art and even his personal life. This is the cover of Marilyn Manson's second album, Antichrist Superstar. Furthermore, in recent years, Manson was accused by numerous women of physical, psychological and sexual abuse. His ex-partner, Evan Rachel Wood, wrote on Instagram. The name of my abuser is Brian Warner, also known to the world as Marilyn Manson. He started grooming me when I was a teenager, and horrifically abused me for years. I was brainwashed and manipulated into submission. I am done living in fear of retaliation, slander or blackmail. I am here to expose this dangerous man and call out the many industries that have enabled him, before he ruins any more lives. I stand with the many victims who will no longer be silent. With all that being said, what was Marilyn Manson standing in front of that chapel? Is it because Kanye was trying to be Christ-like by bringing sinners to the house of God? I really don't think that Manson is remotely close to converting to Christianity. Manson was standing on this porch in his trademark makeup, which meant he was not there as Brian Warner, or the man, but as Marilyn Manson, the artist, who also dubs himself Antichrist Superstar. Anti. 
Christ. Is this chapel actually the site of a satanic ritual? Another guest at this chapel was Jamaican star, Shensi. Only a few weeks ago, I published a video about her first music video, which was highly ritualistic and highly satanic. Furthermore, Shensia's mother died unexpectedly shortly after she signing with Interscope Records, which spurred rumors of her sacrificing her mother for fame. Not unlike Canny. In short, her being at the chapel is also another strong hint that this is not the house of God at all. When Canny sings his Christian songs in front of these carefully selected celebrities, in a dark oppressive police state setting, something feels off. It is almost as if Canny, and Christianity as a whole, are actually being mocked. The merchandise associated with Donda was also highly symbolic. On the left, Donda merch featuring the symbol of a cross inside a hexagram. On the right, the symbol of theosophy which includes an ankh cross inside a hexagram. Without going into details, theosophy is an occult movement that is still highly revered by the occult elite. A brief look at the literature of this movement reveals that its most important figure is Lucifer, a.k.a. the Light Bear. The name of Theosophy's monthly magazine was literally Lucifer. Why did Canny, or whoever controls him, select a symbol that is clearly inspired by an occult movement that has the Light Bearer as its central figure? -y? One thing is for sure, there was intense light at Canny's chapel. At one point, the house irradiates intense light, hinting that something otherworldly is happening inside of it. Then, Canny goes inside, and this happens. Canny is engulfed in flames. The only word I can find to describe the scene is, hellish. Then, Canny walks around while literally on fire. As you might know, fire calcinates. It turns everything into ashes. In the alchemical process, this stage is called Negrito, it is followed by albedo, the whitening. In a highly ritualistic moment, Kim Kardashian comes out wearing a wedding dress and engages in a slow processional walk towards Kanye. For some reason, Kim's neck appeared to be unnaturally elongated. Was there was a conscious effort to make her look like the maternal figure on the cover of Donda. Compare the neck and the ponytail with Kim Kardashian. There's obviously a lot to unpack here. One year ago, Kanye attempted to break away from the Kardashians, even accusing them of trying to lock him up. That's a serious accusation. One year later, in a performance that is rife with occult symbolism, Kim appears in a wedding dress. Does it mean that Kim and Kanye, in their Christ-like ways, decided to put their differences aside for the benefit of their family? That would be nice and heartwarming. However, this would have nothing to do with the rest of the event. Indeed, considering the highly occult and ritualistic context of this performance, this scene might be about a completely opposite message. Since Kim and Candy are already married, this procession is about another kind of marriage. It is about Candy being bound to the occult elite till death do us part. The fact that Kim looks strangely like the figure on the cover of Donda is also significant. That figure represents motherhood. Kim represents the occult system that replaced his mother. In short, the album was dedicated to Donda, but the symbolism around it actually celebrates her sacrifice. The symbolism of the last listening party perfectly represents Kanye West in 2021. His childhood home represents his origins, his family, his mother and his true inner self. On top of that home is a cross representing the Christian faith he is so vocal about, However, that is all a facade. Because that house has been deeply corrupted. Industry figures such as Marilyn Manson, aka Antichrist Superstar, walk around his house as if they own the place. Around his house are walls, mobs of people and government vehicles. He is tightly controlled by the occult elite and the power structure it represents. He cannot escape it. And, after catching fire inside his own house, Kanye ritualistically marries the mother of his children, who is the replacement of his own mother. As stated at the beginning of this video, everything surrounding Kanye in the past years has been rife with confusion. And, honestly, I am not sure if Kanye was a willing participant in this occult circus, or if he was forced to go through it. Did Kanye have to sacrifice Donda a second time in order to put out that album?
Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.